FC Braga are widely considered the fourth biggest club in Portuguese football and over the past few decades have become more of an established club on the European stage. In recent years they have competed in the UEFA Champions League and even reached the final of the Europa League way back in 2011 where they lost to fellow rivals FC Porto. Despite being considered the fourth biggest club in the country, such as the dominance of the big three of Benfica, Porto and Sporting, Braga are considered the joint fifth most successful club in the country's history with just seven trophies. To put that into perspective, Benfica alone have 85, with Porto just behind on 84. Although they've had recent success in the Cups, including winning the Taca de Liga this past January, none of those trophies Braga have won are the Premier Liga, which has to be the aim ever since the Qatari Investment Authority, the same fund that owns PSG, purchased 22% of the club in late 2022 and they've given themselves a real chance. They've hired the bearded manager to take Braga from outside of the top table to the head of it. We're here to win league titles and maybe turn SC Braga into a European force. It might be a little tricky to begin with as we have just under 3.5 million to spend in the transfer window and one of the club's major signings, João Marquez, is on loan for the rest of the season. But our squad does have a number of high potential players and we did add to it with the 625k signing of midfielder Andre Franco from Porto. We offset that with the sale of Lucas Piazon as we look to move on some of the ageing players in this squad. A squad that the media expect to finish fourth as expected. In the league this season, we were sensational, racking up some high scoring wins and losing only once in the first half of the season, going down 4-1 away at defending champions Benfica. We saw a few outgoings in January as striker Abel Ruiz moved to Leicester for 8.5 million and our star winger Ricardo Horta also moved to England joining Newcastle for a deal that could rise to 26 million. This allowed us to bring in striker Rafa Mir from Sevilla for 1 million, winger Marcus Paolo from Atletico Madrid for 2.4 million, as well as Portuguese international William Carvalho from Real Betis for 2.8 million. We also secured the loan signing of Israeli winger Manuel Solomon from Tottenham until the end of the season. These signings helped us rip through the league once more, but in a title showdown with Benfica in April, we lost 3-2 thanks to a 96th minute winner. And although we won the following six games, we ultimately finished second, one point behind Benfica, but with a seriously better goal difference. That 96th minute winner proved to be title deciding. But we did qualify for the Champions League where we will hope to do better than this season as after we secured our qualification through the playoffs, we finished third in a group containing Manchester City, RB Leipzig and Young Boys which meant we dropped down to the Europa League where we went out in the round of 16 in a crazy few matches with AS Roma which ended a staggering 11-7 on aggregate. Now we might have failed in Europe, but we are planning on turning Braga into a force in Portuguese football and we did have two cups to play for. After beating Benfica on penalties in the semi-final of the League Cup, we took on fierce rival Sporting in the final and went ahead through Rodrigo Zalazar. Sporting hit back with goals from Marcus Edwards and then Sebastian Coates before Simon Banza equalised to take the final to penalties. Francesco Trincao missed a crucial spot kick for Sporting, meaning we lifted the League Cup just as Braga did in real life this past January. Our run to the final of the Portuguese Cup, however, was more impressive, as we visited Benfica in the quarter-finals. Siko Niakite headed us in front after just three minutes, and then Zalazar doubled the lead just five minutes later. Manuel Solomon slammed home the third before Alvaro Jao wrapped up an historic 4-0 win for us. We cruised past second division P Ferreira in the semis to once again face Sporting in our second domestic cup final of the season. We opened the scoring again, this time through Christian Borges' deflected strike before Simon Banza raced clear on the stroke of half time to seal a 2-0 win completing a domestic cup double. So 
by our first season and that's two trophies in the cabinet and we were a 96th minute winner away from winning Braga their first league title. So this summer we're going to move on some of the older players and we're going to rebuild this squad and go again. A major departure saw our goalkeeper Mateus leave the club, signing for Arsenal for 17 million. Fullback Joey Mendes moved to Udinese for 1.8 million, and Ronnie Lopez headed to Derby County for 700k. Andre Horta also moved to England, joining Nottingham Forest for 3.7 million. We've signed a large number of young players on a free transfer, and the majority of them will be loaned out or possibly moved on for profit as we go through this video. However, we did rebuild the squad this summer. Some of the free signings that will play a part in that rebuild are our new first choice goalkeeper, Ignacio Dil Arroborena, who joins from Maruca, as well as centre-back David Batella from Brianza. Matteo Moroy joins us as a utility man from Dortmund, whilst Alex Kraut adds some experience to our midfield. We did spend some money as defender Eduardo Caresma and winger Sylvester Jasper and Macho Giallo join the club for a combined 8 million, but have been loaned back to their clubs for the following season. Hugo Salza joins as our backup keeper for 1.2 million, and highly rated centre back Rafael Pontello joins from Sporting for 1.6 million. Pablo Roberto adds some quality to our midfield, joining from Casapia for just under 5 million, and our main signing was exciting young German Kan Uzan, who joins from Nuremberg for 8 million. So as you can see, a really busy summer of transfers and things got even busier on transfer deadline day. Two of our best players in fullback Victor Gomez and midfielder Ali al Mazrati both had their release clauses triggered, joining Real Madrid and Newcastle both for 25.5 million. This allowed us to bring in Portuguese wonder kid Thiago Santos from Lille for 16.5 million, Sergio Gomez from Man City for 3.5 million, and we also picked up Emerson Royale, who was on the transfer list for just 3.3 million. I mean, at that price, it would have been stupid not to buy him. But our biggest signing was a former wonder kid, Renato Sanchez, who we bought back to Portugal from PSG for just 4.6 million. And he could be the figurehead of our push for Portuguese dominance. Oh, and we also signed Cristiano Ronaldo as our under 23 manager. Our starting 11 looks tremendous with last season's golden boot winner, Simon Banza leading the line and we have so much strength and depth on the bench that I'm expecting a big season this year. We competed in the Portuguese Super Cup this season and I'm not gonna show the goals, but it was mental. I mean, the crowd got their money's worth, right? After picking up our third trophy of this rebuild, we entered the Champions League, looking to make a bigger impact than last season, and we were drawn in the league phase along with Dortmund, Villa, Feyenoord, Real Madrid, PSV, Monaco, Napoli, and Bayern. We did pick up a glorious win at Dortmund, as well as a draw with Real Madrid, but thankfully our win against Napoli saw us scrape through in the final playoff position. There, we defeated Celtic 7-4 and Agrica across the two legs before we were humbled in the last 16 by PSG 4-1 on Agrica, although we did draw 1-1 with them at home. Another potential trophy also passed us by as our retention of the Portuguese League Cup lasted until the semi-final where Sporting got a measure of revenge with a 4-0 win. So we couldn't retain one of our trophies from last season, but the Portuguese Cup was a different beast entirely. We made our way through to the final of the competition once more, with our fifth round match with Benfica the biggest highlight of the run. Debutant Paxton Arison netted a stunning hat-trick on our way to an historic 7-1 win over our fierce rivals. I mean, we just love facing them in the cup, it seems. Like last season, we faced Sporting in the final, only this time it was decided by only one goal, as our incredible fullback Thiago Santos scored in the first half and we lifted the Portuguese Cup for the second season in a row. 
but could we go one better in the league? Like last season, we obliterated teams on our way to a stunning league campaign, and by the end of January, we were sitting well clear at the top of the table. The aforementioned Aronson joined us in January to inject some more flair to our attacking line, and we cruised through the rest of the season, not losing one game in 2025 to secure Braga their first ever Liga Portugal win, sitting clear of Benfica by 12 points. So we've already turned Braga into a trophy winning machine, but there is still some serious work to do to turn them from a Portuguese force into a European one. We've got 16 million to spend this summer, but a number of outgoings brought in a lot of money. As Matteo Mori departed for Brentford for 1.3 million, and young centre back Maddy Monome left for Manchester United for 7.5 million. The biggest outgoing, however, was our star centre back Serda Saatchi, who moved to Everton for 42 million. This gave us a healthy budget to bolster our squad, and we did so with centre back Lucas Halter joining from Butterfogo for 7.5 million, along with Rafa Mar for an absolute snip at 16. But our most exciting signing was Italian wonder kid Simone Pafundi, who we signed from Udinese for 15.25 million, and this kid looks like a real star in the making. I implore you to pick this guy up in your next football manager save. As always, I raided the free market as well, bringing in Kepa from Chelsea as a goalkeeping option and Sergio Carrera from Celta Vigo. We've also bolstered our midfield with the free additions of youngster Jasper Espria from Watford and Jota Silva from Vitoria. We're predicted third this year by the media, but looking at our first 11 and our squad as a whole, we should dominate this league once again and hopefully go a little further in the Champions League. Oh, and I've been inducted into the Portuguese Hall of Fame. Go oh, me. Before we get into season three of this rebuild, I just wanted to take a very quick moment just to say thank you for watching the video. And if you could do me a favor, I'd very much appreciate it if you could just click the little thumbs up down below. It tells YouTube that you think this video is pretty good and that my content's good and then YouTube will do whatever. I don't know, algorithms and such. Anyway, thank you very much and on to season three. We kick things off this season with the Super Cup as we look to retain the trophy that we won 10-5 last season against Benfica. This time we face Sporting and after goals from Arison and a brace from Lucas Halter, Rafa Marin headed in a fourth before Pablo Roberto sealed a 5-0 win with a thunderbolt, giving us the first trophy of the season. And it wouldn't be the last. We made our way through the League Cup to face off with Benfica in the final and Thiago Santos opened the scoring before Vita Cavallio added a second. Benfica pulled one back before half time, but Jota Silva's superb solo goal restored our two goal lead. Arthur Cabral reduced the deficit once more before Renato Sanchez scored this scorcher and Simon Banzo wrapped up a 5-2 win and another trophy for our cabinet. However, we did crash out of the Portuguese Cup in the semi-final, going down 5-0 on aggregate to FC Porto. In the Champions League, we were drawn against Arsenal, Valencia, PSV, Inter Milan, Dortmund, Slavia Prague, Leverkusen and Roma, and we were flying after five games, but then a poor end to the league phase saw us drop into the playoffs, where we took on Inter Milan once again. And after Bastoni put into his own net, Simone Pafundi doubled our lead, and then Inter conceded another own goal to give us an incredible 3-0 lead. It feels like this season we are finally finding our feet in the Champions League. In the Portuguese league, we were unstoppable, not losing a game until January, where we did do a little bit of business. As wingers Alvaro Jallo and Bruno departed for a combined 24 million, and William Carvalho headed to AZ Alkmaar for first team football and a five million pound fee. Goalkeeper Ignacio de Arabarena headed to Man United on loan with a future fee to come. We snapped up Luis Junior as a replacement for 5.25 million and made a tremendous signing as Federico Redondo joined from Argentinos Juniors for just 4.4 million. We only lost one more game for the rest of the season and once again won the league by 12 points, securing back-to-back -back championships. We are seriously cooking now, but to make that step up in Europe, 
we are going to have to make some major signings to this squad. A few of our stalwarts departed the club this summer as Renato Sanchez wanted a new challenge and so moved on to Brentford for 30.5 million, netting us a 26 million pound profit. Diarra Verena also made his move to United permanent for 15.25 million and Thiago Santos's release clause was hit and he moved to Leverkusen for 34.5 million. Rodrigo Zalazar refused to sign a new deal, so we shipped him off to Everton for 22 million. Lastly, age and injuries have caught up with Simon Banzer and he headed to Lille on loan with a potential 30 million transfer to come. So there are some big holes in this team right now, but this summer may have been the best summer I have done in any of my rebuilds so far. Goalkeeper Noah Atubalu was on the transfer list for 18 million and we snapped him up to be our new number one. We also bought in Luka Sucic from Barcelona for 14 million, as well as Fabio Silva from Wolves for 32 million. Up top, we also signed highly rated Arnold Calamuendo from Rennes for just 16.5 million. But it was the free market where we added some proper experience and class, as Giovanni Simeone joined on a free from Napoli and centre-back Presnel Kambembe joins us from PSG. But our marquee signing was of Portuguese midfielder Ruben Neves who ran down his contract at Al Halal and joined us to become our new midfield linchpin. Our starting 11 is now formidable, a blend of exciting young talent and world-class experience and although the media have us third, I think we've got the best squad in the league and I want to make it three in a row. We kicked off the UEFA Champions League this season in a league alongside Villarreal, Inter, RB Leipzig, Brentford of all teams, Juventus, PSG, Copenhagen and Poznan and we secured some impressive wins especially when RB Leipzig came to Portugal. Arnaud Calamuendo opened the scoring before a pender drew Leipzig level all within the first 10 minutes. On the half hour, Calamuendo restored our lead before completing a first half hat-trick just before half time. Simone Perfundi slotted home a penalty before Sergio Gomez smashed home our fifth. Calamuendo then added his fourth of the game before Emerson Royale nodded home to make it 7 1. We finished seventh, meaning we went straight through to the last 16 where we were drawn with Inter, who sensationally knocked us out last season when we won the first tie 3 0. This time, however, they won the first leg 3-1. And in the return leg, Matteo Prati opened the scoring with a deflected drive. Luka Sucic drew the tie level before Newerton scored the all-important winner, seeing us win 3-0 and go through 4-3 on aggregate. Payback can be a real However, the quarterfinals is where our journey came to an end as we went down 3-2 at home to Chelsea before losing 1-0 at Stamford Bridge to go out 4-2 on aggregate. A strong showing, but that's nothing compared to how we did domestically. We picked up our third successive Portuguese Super Cup to start the season as Giovanni Simeone scored late on to secure a 1-0 win over Sporting to lift the trophy. We also cruised through to the League Cup final to take on Benfica and Calamuendo opened the scoring before our sensational left back Sergio Gomez slammed home the second to see us once again lift the League Cup. And like the Super Cup, we faced Sporting in the final of the Portuguese Cup where a close range effort from Matteo Prati and a great strike from Newerton saw us pick up every domestic cup this season. But can we add our third league title in a row to win a sensational, unprecedented quadruple? Prati and Newerton are new signings to the side for a combined cost of 32.5 million. Joining the club in January after unfortunately our wonder kid Perfundi moved to Liverpool for 40 million as they activated his release clause. He'd been crowned the best under 21 player in the world so it was inevitable really and he was joined out of the door by Paxton Arison and Jasper Espria who both were surplus to requirements. We 
bolstered our defence this January with the signings of Mika Fey from Barcelona and Jordi Makengo from Hoffenheim, who joined for a combined 3.8 million. But we were dominant all season, winning 31 out of the 34 league games to smash the points record and win the league with 94 points, securing a third straight league title and completing a clean sweep of the Portuguese game. This was done with the help of Arnaud Calamuendo, who stepped into Banza's shoes easily and notched an astonishing 40 goals across the campaign, whilst our fullback Sergio Gomez made a staggering 29 assists. We have clearly turned Braga into the most dominant force in Portuguese football, but I really want to have a crack at upsetting the European elite in the final season of this rebuild. To do so, we have a few changes to make to the squad as Giovanni Simeone headed out to Al Shabab for 14 million and Vita Cavallo moved to Espanyol for 10 million. Pablo Roberto headed to Saudi Arabia for 7.25 million, whilst backup keeper Luis Junior moved back to Brazil, joining Sao Paulo for 5.5 million. João Marquez and Simon Banza also left, heading to Vigo and Rem respectively for a combined 10 million. Our use of the free market was once again exceptional as we secured experienced fullback Jao Cancelo on a free from Man City as well as young attacker Ruben van Bommel from AZ Alkmaar. But the standout was Oscar Glaup, he's a very well known wonder kid and he joins us after his contract expired with RB Salzburg. We also spent about 50 million bringing in a new backup keeper in Andre Gomez from Benfica for 4.5 million and defender Bishio Bui from RB Leipzig for 4.7. Andre Santos arrived from Chelsea for just 8 million and the wonderfully named Herculano Nabian provides competition in attack. Our marquee signing was Pedro Goncalves who returned to Portugal from Arsenal for 22 million. This starting 11 may be the most exciting I've ever put together. The bench is phenomenal and finally the media have acknowledged our dominance of this league as we are odds on favourites to win a fourth title in a row. Let's go one more time, shall we? We started the season as we always do with the Portuguese Super Cup and we faced Sporting for the third season in a row. And like two years ago, we wiped the floor with them thanks to goals from Redondo, Marin, Devitin Oscar Glauk and two goals from Sergio Gomez to secure a 5-0 win. But we were unable to maintain our domestic dominance as in the League Cup, we bowed out in the semi-final 1-0 to Benfica. Before we get into the other competitions, we did have some January transfer business. Federico Redondo headed to Altay in Saudi Arabia for 14 million, whilst Mika Fey left for first team football, signing for Alaves for 3.2 million. Unfortunately, Herculano Nabian wasn't happy playing second fiddle to Calamuendo and joined Inter Milan on loan with a mandatory 11.5 million fee to come. We brought back Maddy Monome on loan from Man United, along with Ignacio Dura from Athletic Bilbao for 4.2 million. We also nabbed Arthur Cabral from close rivals Benfica for just 6.5 million. These signings bolstered our squad and we made our way all the way to the final of the Portuguese Cup, looking to win it for the fourth time in this rebuild. We faced FC Porto in the final and Pedro Goncalves opened the scoring in the 13th minute before Calamuendo stole in to double the lead before half time. Kanuzan wrapped things up in the second half as we won 3 0 and added yet another trophy to the cabinet. As for the league, this was the season of sheer dominance as we went unbeaten throughout the entire league season, becoming invincibles in the process, dropping just four points across the campaign. We set a new Two points record with 98 and had a goal difference of 108 as well as we won the Portuguese Premier League for the fourth straight year. Sheer domination however we were unable to repeat the quadruple from last year. But could we complete an even better one? This year we were drawn against Real Sociedad, Chelsea, Villa, Astana, Leverkusen, Barcelona, RB Salzburg and Galatasaray and we lost only once, picking up 17 points to finish a respectable fifth in the table, sending us through to the last 16 where we faced Borussia Dortmund. 
In the Stadion Dortmund, we blew them away as two first half goals from Newerton put us in control before Oscar Glauck sealed a 3 0 win to put us in control and we saw our way through with a 2-2 home draw in the return leg. Juventus were up next in the quarterfinals and like Dortmund, we caught them cold in the first leg as first half goals from Pedro Goncalves and Oscar Glauck and a late goal in the second half from Jota Silva gave us a 3-0 lead to take to Italy. Juventus did battle back, but it wasn't enough as although they won 2-0, we made it to the semi-final. Now, it was time to believe in Braga. A 0-0 draw in France meant we had the advantage back in Portugal for the second leg of the semi-final. And Arnaud Calamuendo opened the scoring before Rafa Marin powered home our second just before half time. Sergio Gomez slammed home the third from the spot before Alexander Golovan nodded Monaco back into the tie. Oscar Glaut kept his call to put us 4-1 up before Zuma pulled another back. But in injury time, Arthur Cabral notched a fifth to send Braga to the Champions League final. Just the small task of beating Manchester City to come. In a season where we had wiped the floor with the Portuguese league, this team are ready to go toe to toe with Europe's best. And former Man City man Sergio Gomez opened the scoring on 23 minutes. Then, on the stroke of half time, Emerson Royale smashed home a second to send us 2-0 up. Our two fullbacks, who cost less than 7 million combined four seasons ago, absolute club legends. Less than the 270 million City paid for Jude Bellingham, who pulled one back in the 52nd minute. But then, in the 74th minute, the ball dropped for Arthur Cabral to smash home and secure SC Braga the Champions League, crowning us as the best team in the whole of Europe. This incredible journey has been capped off with the unthinkable, as our invincibles became immortals. And this season, our left back Sergio Gomez scored an unfathomable 31 goals, as well as notching 26 assists. I mean, that's not bad for three and a half million. We leave Braga as the definitive powerhouse in Portugal, having won four league titles on the bounce, four Portuguese Cups, four League Cups and four Super Cups. We broke the points record, we went unbeaten for a whole season and capped it off with the unlikeliest Champions League win in history. And that brings an end to probably the best rebuild I have done so far. Uh, please let me know in the comments below who you believe was the MVP of this rebuild and maybe suggest another team for me to take on. Uh, there'll be a link to the Discord below if you want to join on there and have a chat with me about Football Manager or about football. Um, please like the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And as always, I've been the Bearded Manager and I'll see you next time.